five minute video, we're gonna talk about trademarks. So let me start by telling a story. So a client of mine sets up his business and actually starts business um, back in 2017. And he's still in business. So here we are, it's 2023, he's on year six or seven. And back in the day, he asked me about registering his trademark. So what that means really is either you can register your name or you can register your logo, which might include the, the graphics and even colors or whatnot. And so for him, I asked him which one's more important. And he said, well, honestly, one goes with the other. Um, and his, his logo involves a shield, which is directly tied to the name. And so he wants them both protected. And so what that means is that the USPTO, that's the United States Patent and Trademark Office, we're gonna have to do two applications, one for just the words and one for the words with the design elements, the logo, um, because he wants to protect it. So first things first, I, I ask him, I'm like, hey, do you know of any competitors? He goes, yeah, well actually there's a nonprofit that kind of does the same thing we do, but in a different niche. Um, specifically, this nonprofit is working on, uh, it's a nonprofit, they're helping veterans get jobs. Whereas he's doing a staffing agency that happens to be focused on IT. And so the IT staffing company doesn't really compete with the veteran nonprofit staffing company. But the way the world works is when you apply for a trademark application, you have to pick from the list of 45 international classes. So for example, legal services is category 45. Uh, 35 is the catch-all for business services. And there's all different ones. There's firearms, there's uh, beer and wine, there's hard liquors, for some reason those are separate categories. Uh, education is 41. And so what you do with your trademark attorney is you go through that list. So for example, if I'm selling t-shirts, coffee mugs, and legal services, we would have to apply for three different uh, categories. And they charge you a fee per category because what they're doing is they're gonna search your name or logo in that category for other potential co conflicts. So let's take a little step back. So pre-COVID, we were looking at about 300,000 applications a year. And back in those days, I could say with confidence that it would be about three months, give or take, for an attorney to be assigned. And all things, like from A to Z without a big hiccup, you could finish your trademark process and get the registration in six months. That was kind of normal. Um, I first did my first trademark application in 2012, and it was about the same from 2012 through 2020. It was just, that was what it was. Um, since then, a couple things have happened in the world. There was a hiring freeze at the USPTO. Then the Amazon created this brand registry where they said that in order to be on the brand registry, you had to have a registered trademark. And then they, they softened it later on to say, well, not a registered trademark, at least the trademark application. And so what started happening is it went from 300,000 a year to 4 million plus a year applications, meaning that the diminished workforce, because they did a hiring freeze for the government, a diminished workforce is now handling exponentially more applications. So now I'm telling clients, listen, it might be a year before you get assigned a trademark attorney. And then, then the add on another four to five months from that point to the end. So we're looking at easily a year and a half to register your trademark. Um, so if you want to get it done, no time like the present, like get the ball rolling now because it will take time. And all I can tell you is a year and a half will, you know, fly by and then you'll look back and be like, wow, I'm glad I did that. So when you do your application, again, you're picking from um, your logo. Do you want to do a design elements? Do you want to do just the words or do you want to do both? Then you're going through the list of goods and services and you're picking what you are. So a lot of times you can be like, well, I'm in staffing now, which is category 35, but later on we might start doing education, which would be category 41. Well, you're allowed to do an application ahead of time, right? Um, and the lingo is a 1A application means you're already in business. A 1B application means you plan on someday going into business. So sometimes people will try to register their trademark ahead of time and in fact, that's part of their, their due diligence is, hey, before we invest in building this brand, let's make sure we can get a trademark registration. Because here's what happens. The trademark gets assigned to that attorney and that attorney is gonna do two things. First thing they're gonna do is they're gonna look at the actual application and they're gonna see how the application is in terms of does it need to add a disclaimer? Do we need to move around a comma? Do we need to tighten up the description, right? So these are like, what we call procedural uh, elements that might be objected to. And the objection comes in the form of what's called an office action. The office action is literally the objection from the trademark office. 
And some objections are super easy. So easy that I don't even tell my client. I'm like, hey, we got an objection. Oh, they wanna move a comma? Great, we agree, we'll move the comma. I won't even tell my client. And then some objections are actually unfortunately big and problematic, the biggest one being likelihood of confusion. So what the trademark attorney will do is they'll say, hey, wait a minute, there's another registration already registered a few years ago and they're in the same category. And now when I look at it with my own eyes, I can see that it's almost the same name or almost the same logo. And so then we have a big hurdle. And sometimes we can make an argument like, hey, you're mistaken. There's not a conflict, like you're just wrong. Or, hey, we have first use. So prior use can sometimes win these arguments. Or we'll say, hey, hold on a second. Let us reach out to that company ourselves and say, hey company, why don't we enter into a coexistence agreement? Why don't the two of us agree that we'll just both exist and we won't fight with each other? Um, I once had one where the company was in uh, Georgia and we were in Florida and we said, listen, we promise we'll never go to Georgia and you promise you'll never come to Florida and they agreed. All right, so obviously this is a cool subject. I could go on and on. Um, I'm happy to be here on a team of people who really are passionate about this. So if you have questions about maybe registering your brand or protecting your, uh, you know, I, I like to say your reputation, leave a comment below and I'm happy to set up a call with either me or one of my colleagues.